Welcome to Writing Your Research Paper. This is Part 5, Documenting Your Sources. I'm Jean Reynolds. Congratulations! You've done your research, made an outline, and drafted your research paper. Now you're ready for the final step, documenting your sources. This task involves showing where you found your information. Very likely your information came from books, magazines, and online sources. But remember that research can also involve travel, phone calls, and personal interviews. When Edward A. Berlin researched his biography of composer Scott Joplin, he traveled widely and found much new information about Joplin. Edward Berlin carefully documented all his sources, and you should too. Make sure you know which documentation system your instructor wants you to use. MLA is the usual choice for papers in English courses and the humanities. APA is recommended for papers in the physical and social sciences. Some institutions prefer the Chicago Manual of Style or Turabian. Ask your instructor. You'll need to locate a documentation guide. Details, such as periods, commas, and word order, have to be done carefully. If your college or university has an official handbook, make sure you have a copy. It will have instructions for documenting your paper. Your institution's library has handbooks and other resources. OWL, the online writing lab at Purdue University, is a wonderful free resource that I use often. Librarians are glad to answer questions, but don't expect them to do your work for you. The Citation Machine Online will format works cited entries for you free. It's a resource that I often use myself. But double check the results. Sometimes mistakes creep in. The next step is to understand which information needs to be documented and which doesn't. You should document only information that someone might question. For example, Nobody is going to argue about when President Theodore Roosevelt was born, the names of generals during the Civil War, and the scientific names of most plants and animals. But there's disagreement about the causes of the Civil War, the way mushrooms are classified, Scott Joplin's date of birth, because there's no birth certificate, the proper role of the Supreme Court, and similar questions. And you must always give sources for quotations, statistics, and data. Here's how to insert sources. Reread your research paper. Every time you come to a fact, quotation, or statistic that must be documented, write an in-text citation like this one, White 316, shown in blue, meaning a book by White on page 316. If you've done your research carefully, you should already have written down the information you need, author, title, page number, and so on. If not, you may have to do some backtracking. Let's look at page one of our research paper about ragtime. The citations are done in MLA format. There are several historic facts in the first paragraph. How many of them require documentation? The answer is none. There's no controversy about these historic facts. In 1976, John Joplin posthumously received a Pulitzer Prize. By the time he died, ragtime was losing popularity. By the 1970s, Americans were rediscovering ragtime. Ragtime became popular again in the 1970s. Scholars became interested in ragtime. And we won't document the thesis. It's the main point of this research paper, and we'll be supporting it in every paragraph. Historians today point to the ragtime era, 1895 to 1915, as a turning point in American musical history. But we will need to document other kinds of information, quotations, information from experts, and historical facts that require verification. Let's look at a quotation from the first paragraph. This is a useful quotation because it indicates how important ragtime music was. According to music scholars William Schaefer and Johannes Rydell, ragtime effected a total musical revolution. 
the first great impact of black folk culture on the dominant white middle class culture of America. If we look up William Schaefer in the works cited list on the last page, we'll find that he's the co-author of Art of Ragtime. Here's the works cited entry for Schaefer and Rydell's book. If you wanted to look up the quotation, you could find it on page 11 in the introduction. The Roman number is because it's from the introduction at the beginning of the book. Now let's look at other information that needs sources. Just before Joplin died, he announced that he was working on a symphony. No traces of a symphony by Scott Joplin have been found. Is the story true? Yes, it's true. Scholar Edward Berlin dug through some old newspaper articles and found an interview with Joplin that mentioned his symphony. The story is told on page 238 of Berlin's book, King of Ragtime. Here's the works cited entry for Edward Berlin's book. The publisher is the Oxford University Press. MLA style requires a capital U. You don't spell out university in a citation. Let's do one more citation. Here's a story from page two of the research paper. Alice Roosevelt, daughter of President Theodore Roosevelt, once interrupted a reception at the White House to ask the Marine Band to play the Maple Leaf Rag. This story is useful because it shows how popular ragtime was. Even the President's daughter loved it. But is the story true? The answer is yes. H. Loring White verified the story and included it in his book Ragging It. Here are the story and the citation. Notice that I provided the author, his name is White, and the page number, 216, so that readers can find the source on the works cited page at the end of the research paper. They could then read White's book to learn more about the story. The works cited page at the end of the research paper lists complete information about each source, author, title, date of publication, publisher, city of publication, and so on. You should write down this information while you're reading so that you'll have it when you need it. Be sure to include every source that you used on your works cited page. And remember that librarians can help you with sources. I go to librarians for help all the time. Here's another tip. Encyclopedia entries often have recommended reading lists that are good starting points for research. If you have questions about research or documentation, talk to your instructor or a librarian. You can read the entire Ragtime paper free at ragtimeresearchpaper.com. Please take a few minutes to look at it. You'll see how it's organized and how all the parts work together. And be sure to watch all five parts of the Writing Your Research Paper series at researchpapersteps.com. If you'd like to sharpen your writing skills, take a look at my book, What Your English Teacher Didn't Tell You, available at Amazon.com. And remember to check out the free resources at writewithgene.com. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.